we just left off with you talking about future cities, and I was sharing with you about the village do. Then you were talking yep. about city bond. Yeah. yeah. So, so this is bit with uh, some very dear friends in the U.S. We've been developing this concept actually for a while. Um, Travis Wallace uh, from from Earth Goals and um, Phoenix, um, who we've got a partnership with. Um, with the uh, World Fair that's coming to the US to um, create this like showcase of, of a new way of funding innovation in cities. And what it requires is for the city just to put the initial seed funding in. And then what we do is with that, create a uh, um, like a tokenized bond structure that will allow investors, local residents of a city to go and say, okay, I would like to be part of funding the innovation programs of the city. And then what this, the city can do is offer this as a, um, uh, like an investment product for people to then participate in the direct transformation of the city. And so what we're thinking is um, partnering with city mayors to bring, to create like initially pop-ups of the up game but ultimately we'll, we'll, we'll choose a, a, like a league of cities that will be the kind of permanent home to regular up games. And um, the, the city bonds uh, could be one of the ways that the solutions that are um, developed from the up game around like 16 pillars could get funded. And so the city, the, the city could put the initial seed funding and then we can raise institutional and individual funding to continue that, you know, driving that and um, fueling that innovation, that regenerative transformation of the city. And yeah. the last thing I'll say, I, I you know, I, I, I don't know if I ever mentioned this part, but my, um, there's almost like a, a second father figure to me, but a very dear mentor that influenced me a lot was Benjamin Barber. I don't know if you've ever come across ben, Ben's work. He, um, he created, um, he, he created the Global Parliament of Mayors, which is now C40. And he's basically oh, like ab oh, abs abs absolutely beloved by mayors. And, um, and he, 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 his last book before he died was um, if, if City Mayors Ruled the World, If Mayors Ruled the World. And he did a TED talk that's been seen by, you know, 10 million people or something uh, called, uh, I can send you that TED talk, but it's exactly on this point. And so often I think of this vision of like city bonds, which are essentially like peace bonds that they, they function like a national kind of an, a, a country could issue war bonds that people are going to invest, invest in to fund a war effort. This is like the regenerative bonds. Sure. And I think this is a huge idea for cities to kind of reclaim their sovereignty and be part of a planetary network as opposed to a national network, like a, a, you know, being subservient to the, the nation of which they belong, being part of a kind of um, a grid of sovereign regenerative cities that sit, um, that, that creates a kind of a, a planetary grid that can actually create the United Planet, that can create an institution that is, um, uh, you know, globe globe like truly global uh, without borders uh yeah 100 percent, yes and uh what i was talking about with the the village do that i mean that's everything you're talking about is what it was built for um mm -hmm. so yeah i'm 100 percent following that um but then also so the, the, able the, to do, like yeah you're doing a bond yeah you can fund the city but then also having you know as a resident of that city having a direct voice and what is being funded um or you get to exactly. delegate your voice too which is what's so cool you have liquid democracy so rather than voting on a new mayor every four years you get to say you know i want bob to make decisions dealing with science and i want eric to make decisions dealing with housing i want there to make decisions dealing with you know local food or whatever um, so there's categories of the different types of proposals come through, and then you get to delegate your voice to each one of those categories. Um, and then as a resident, you also get to then distribute the budget. So rather than, you know, five people being able to say, hey, we're going to spend 20% or whatever we spend on war efforts every year, which is insane. We're going to spend more on military. They're going to spend on, you know, education. That makes no sense. You know, the citizens yeah. had a direct say in that budget. I guarantee you that wouldn't be the outcome. 
Um, so then the citizens yeah. are get to stream their perspective and you know put their own budget. And then we have some really cool math you do on the back end to make sure you aggregate it and get rid of people trying to manipulate it and all that stuff. But then the citizens this are the ones you know, setting their budget. But what's cool is that cities, they don't have to adopt this full set. Like they can run a little model. We can get with mayors now. They can run this on the side um, and they can just start testing. And if anything, they could just use it to learn, learn how governance works, you know, learn what happens when people have a direct voice. And it could just be an experiment. Maybe they put a couple thousand dollars of value in there, maybe a couple million, you know, who knows? Um, and then they let the citizens kind of decide how to spend it. That'd be really cool. And I think that's the yeah. future of cities, the cities where people are, they're part of that city. They have a direct voice in how that city operates, how that organism thrives. You know? people yeah, I so, I, I so agree with this. And so Tony Cho would be an important partner in this. His initiative is um, Future Cities. He's staying with us from Monday for the next week. Um, and my, my question here for Haifa is, at what point, uh, you know, at what point, because uh, to build that infrastructure, that's like a number of different products, I guess, in one. So you've got like, um, Inspiral is creating co-budget, for example, which I think is like a quite developed tool for like distributing funding, for example. It would be, it would be, you know, is Haifa's choice, would you, would you be like, we want to integrate co-budget or we want to build it all into one integrated what you know one open source solution um both so hypha does the stuff where you're actually sending funds and doing it decentralized and you know doing governance proposals that need to be automated and things like that so it's a way of provably verifying economics and governance but signaling tools like co-budget and all this stuff 100 percent, we can just integrate those um you know yeah hypha is just there to enact the decisions and we're going to build out yeah. a lot of ways of you know, making decisions. But I see something like Code Budget as being a sense making tool, which Hypa got it, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excels it, you know, like Lumio. Is and what about like, tool, you know? yeah, yeah. What, what about like, um, you know, you've got um, D Democracy Earth, for example, has been trying to develop this whole aspect of like liquid democracy and voting. And, you know, is that, like I, I know the team, I, I know the team there. Is that um, is that something that would be too overlapping with the feature set of Haifa, or is it something that we could look to potentially like align and, and create kind of one plus one equals eleven? Um, I always love one plus one equals eleven. Um, the last mm -hmm. time I looked into Democracy Earth, it was quite a while ago, um, and it just felt like. Um, Maybe it wasn't as developed and I didn't feel like reaching out. Yeah. I don't know. There's just for some reason yeah. I don't remember why it just didn't connect. Uh, but it seemed like they were fully aligned with the vision and what was going on. So yeah, I'd love to create with them. I'd love to create with everyone. And I want to get behind the solution yeah. to make the most sense. So yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. this is this is one of the areas I think I could offer a lot of um, like one of the roles I could play with seeds and Haifa is, you know, almost like um, it's like almost like community architecture where we're like finding the partners that could be integration partners and bringing, because I've got a lot of those relationships because that's what I was doing at, um, at Brave New and then at, at, at Savannah Foundation was putting together this like ecosystem of different um, technologies to enable multi-stakeholder collaboration. And so, you know, that that's where, you know, I, I've kind of been, I've been under the hood of something like a thousand multi-stakeholder communities in, in over the last twelve years. Um, so I, 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 you know, at, as far as those conversations, because you know, you can only be in so many of the kind of like whether it be co-budget or I don't know if those relationships are already there, but like you know, the likes of Democracy Earth, the likes of. Um, you know, the other one I was wondering is, is there, is there an alignment with Colony um, and what they're doing? Because they seem to have like focused on a very particular side of, uh, of DAOs that I wonder could be like, is that overlapping technologies with, with high or could it could be complementary um my perspective is always complementary 
Yeah. Um, internet's getting a little bit weird. <clears throat> Sorry. Am I back? Back? Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. Got you. Yeah, weird. Um, yeah, my perspective is it's always complimentary. It's just different flavors. Um, you know, it's not my flavor, but it's going to be other people's flavor, which is perfect. Yeah. Um, and I think we need a lot of different options out there because we need to learn a lot. So we need a lot of different experiments happening. So it's, you know, even from that one, yeah. it's going to be complimentary. Um, the reason we went around and built our own do instead of building on Ethereum, because um, we wanted to just be a DAO and we just used um, EOSIO for, I mean, we used it for two reasons, for seeds and for hypo, just because that was the better technology. Ethereum was definitely the better community at the time, and I love them and I connected well with them, but the technology was just inferior to what we were wanting to do. You know, up until now, like it's just only recently, you know, that DAO started becoming usable. But even that is because they had to figure out how to vote off chain and then snapshot it onto chains. So like governance still doesn't happen on chain in Ethereum. They're doing layer twos where maybe eventually they're going to get there. But still, at the end of the day, if you want to do on chain governance, um, if every time you vote, it's going to cost you, which doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. People don't like that. Uh, and then Ethereum yeah. is very pricey or in any platform that comes with a fee. So that's ultimately what we choose. We had to do our own because in order to do on chain governance, like we just need to build it. Um, and then our do is usable from you know, two years, two and a half years, we've been actually using our do now to govern and pay ourselves. Um, so yeah. we, we wouldn't have been able to do that in any other DAO. So that was the only reason why we didn't get behind Colony or DAO Stack or Aragon or any of those to begin with and decided to build our own is just because still, if we went with them, it would be an inferior environment than what we did. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's, and it's, you know, ultimately, I really love those communities and I think they're doing a lot of good stuff and I'm constantly learning by you know how they're doing it. So like ton, an infinite amount of gratitude for everything they're doing. And I, I would like to mm. imagine that we're best friends and allies in this. And, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely don't think we're competing. Well, it, it, I mean, it's too, the, you know, it's, it, it, we're, we're too premature in the mar market for us to really be like, true competitors because it's like more you know the more we are the building more providers systems. there are eight billion people yeah. who need to be transitioned into new models like yeah, we'll yeah exactly maybe moved over a couple hundred thousand maybe you know yeah it's got a long way to go everyone's there's plenty yeah. to, you know collaborate on yeah so do you do you um because i remember that this was part of our first conversations was we we created um a whole knowledge sharing, collaboration, open source ecosystem for multi-stakeholder communities using EXO. If you go to um, exo uh, uh, platform.com, um, that's what we ended up using. And it's like an open source framework. And I think it could be an alternative for exo.life. Exo.platform. I can I can put this in the chat oh is this for exponential organizations no it's actually it sounds like it but it's not um it's uh it's just the same name okay yeah, um oh, it's different plat platform here yeah, like this dot com um so this is oh yeah so this is what platform. yeah this is what we used at savannah foundation and we ended up just not we put about 200 grand into the code base um, for like building things like open office for like office collaboration, uh, for building like integration to a digital library, uh, integration to Jitsi so we could have open source video conferencing. So any community could have free video conferencing without um, needing Zoom licenses. Um, any community can have shared documents and document collaboration. We've got, we had like, um, you know, virtual whiteboards, uh, we integrated to analytics, you could have a plug in data analytics. And the whole platform was engineered to be this kind of open source interoperable um, container, basically for collaboration apps, collaboration, co creation kind of um, visioning. And uh, so we did a lot of work, we did we, we, we researched all of the different open source collaboration tools that we could find. And we ended up with EXO because of its like 
flexibility for uh, for for, uh, for building on top of it. And so we are, we hosted. We actually um, st still have the instance, but we we hosted um, a uh, like uh, our our own servers. We forked the open source code base, and we built these different integrations into that. Um, and I just wonder whether that might actually provide a deeper like a collaboration front end. The way the way I would see that is it would essentially merge Hypha and Discord. What you're doing on Discord mm. uh, into one into one product, and it, this this is not saying that this should be the strategy. This is just like uh, you know, hey, this is what we did, um, but but it could be uh, an integrated because I right now Discord, I've you know I've seen the the Discord for for um, for, 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 for the Hypha ecosystem, yeah, and. And you know it's kind of it's disconnected, you know it's like two separate products, right? Um, and and th this way, EXO might be able to provide like almost like the front end of collaboration that the, that that uh, Haifa could build into. I'm I'm just wondering here. I I mean I'm I'm into this. What I would love is to set up the strategic advisors call. Bring you onto that, and if you want to give a presentation on Excel and kind of demonstrate it, that would be awesome. And then we could send it. To Excel. I think this is great. I want to get you a role in Hype. Yeah. Um, so you're just talking I, about I, doing I, these strategic partnerships. Like, let's do it. Let's do it for the smart cities with that the video I just sent you. You can demonstrate that. Talk to week, bring them on a call. You know, let's bring that into Hypha, and then let's come to make your role proposal or request or however we want to design it. And then you just said, like, look, I just did this with smart cities, and we can actually ask for, you know, if they want to compensate that, because that's a massive partnership. If we partnered with smart cities to do the village platform to do, and like that became fruitful. Yeah, future future cities. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And we, we could potentially, um, I could, if you could send me maybe the, I've got the seeds and Haifa logo. Let me see if I could potentially have, um, Seeds uh, and Hyfer as a co-host of what we're doing with Future Cities. It might be a bit late in the day because we've got we're going to be hosting like forty of the kind of most influential people in Ibiza, both visiting and um, living here uh, on the Future Cities on Thursday. Um, so i i could I could represent I could represent Seeds and, and like get, you know because I'm already going to be sharing what we're doing with the up game and it, with Cities. Um, so it could be could be a really good way to, you know, bring that. Mm. Yep. Maybe you and I speak before. Maybe we could have our next call. If we have our like weekly, I think a weekly call would be great, just to like really get synced on this because I think there's a there's many areas I think I could kind of um, take, you know, just just take some of the burden off you for being. You know, you're such a central node in the ecosystem, and I think that's one of the areas that I could support with is like holding some of the relationships and some of the kind of whether they be other technology project like ecosystems or hmm. things like future cities, things that related to the UN. Um, you know, think that those like you know whether it be like relationships with um, you know. Uh, like Tatiana runs leaders on purpose, uh, um, so and, you know they've got relationships with like UN Global Compacts, that kind of thing. That's got like eleven thousand companies committing to change, but actually most of them dissatisfied with how the UN Global Compact is. Is you know the UN is just just really a bureaucratic clusterfuck right yeah, now. I mean, change and change in the UN go together as well. As, anyway, there's a joke in there. Don't worry about it. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I didn't quite hear it. <laughs> <laughs> it was lame. Yeah. Um, okay, so how I, I want to come up with like an immediate kind of plan for us. So one, let's get a role and join Hypha in an official capacity. I think it's probably about time for you to do that. Do you have time yeah. for that? Like where, what's, where's your time? I mean, yeah, that, I mean, I, I, I've been doing this. The thing is like everything I'm doing is directly like it's all it's, it's it's already relevant you know it's like that's where i've i've always felt the flow with a uh, high throws like 
everything I'm building and looking at and partnerships I'm making and the way I'm seeing the architecture of the up game is all, you know, it, it's, 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 it, 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 you know, it's, it, it's, it's not a distraction. It's all like, you know, it's not like I'm adding this on top of what I'm already doing. Like what I'm already doing is directly relevant. And if, if we can have Haifa be the, um, you know, the, the hub with which we bring uh, these experiments together, that's the, you know, that's just a win for everyone. Mm -hmm. So, so yes is the short answer. Awesome. Then we probably have two different, you know, initial approaches to Haifa. One would be this animation budget. And then two, because maybe Haifa doesn't want to do animation. Haifa's kind of shifting now to really focus on tech and stuff, not do so much of the storytelling. I still think the animation will pass. So I'm going to, you know, vouch for it. But I can't speak for Haifa. I don't know because tides have kind of turned. But what we're definitely doing is doing movies What's... to do stuff. And that's what you were just talking about is the strategic partnerships for building the do and you know, going to communities and starting August, other groups can start making their own dues. So I think we could make up a do. So what, anyway, the timeline is you join, do these quests in those two capacities, the animation and um, strategic alliances and collaborations. Exactly. Um, Strate August, late August, um, let's launch the updo. So, yeah. and then yeah. the updo can propose for incubation funding through HIFA and HIFA could invest in that. And then the updo can just launch and be its own organism and HIFA could kind of incubate and get it going. That, that's exactly the timeline is, is you, know, uh, you know, July, get the video and all of the, the narrative, which I've been writing, by the way, I've kind of got a, a, a synthesized version now which is um i even did a did a kind of mock uh run through of it all in my voice but um it, it, it the way the video goes five parts um you know earth air fire water and then fifth element and it um, goes through a story of the of, of of the like from 2030 around those elements so we use the elements as a way to kind of frame the narrative essentially um and 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 i think that's going to flow really really well as a um, you know like a, a kind of storytelling framework um i'm into it what i just did is sent you an invite for tuesday um perfect so let's go over this all on tuesday make a proposal because then tuesday night well night for me afternoon for you is the Tuesday. So anyway, this time Tuesday, we can make the proposals to HIFA. So we'll make two. We'll make a quest for the animation. And we can Great. Bring as much of a proposal as you got together, and then we can do the last bits we need to. Um, and then two, we'll do a proposal for um, you doing strategic partnerships. And you could talk about all the stuff you okay. bring. Um, and, and just over the weekend, think about all the different strategic alliances that go with launching a new economy and organization system. like. <laughs> So any network that well, might yeah. be 2,500 businesses, that's key. Being like, yep, relationships there. You know, we'll give them the seed type of offering for those organizations and invite them. You know, that stuff's okay. Matter, so there's a definite need for that. Perfect. Um, Do you have an example of a proposal? Just so I can kind of I mean, copy the can, structure. You can look at all of them and you can see probably ones that passed. But yeah, I'd go through a couple yeah, or at least find one that sounds relevant to what you're looking for. But the glorious part about the blockchain is everything's there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. I will. Um, so this I will is the history button. You can click on that and go back and kind of look. Okay. Perfect. Um, probably better to look for ones that got a lot of support because then you can see what people are voting for. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll take I'll take a look at that. Um, so that, that 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 sounds great. I and I agree. It's time it's time to get the role formalized. Um, yeah. I really I really wanted to um, get you know. Get, get this sometimes it's like you know you're cooking and it's it, it's it's like the dish isn't ready yet and i wanted to kind of like get particularly if it's you know my first proposal i wanted it to be really kind of um buttoned up like this is this is the plan and i think we've got that together now so yeah and i, and can, I appreciate I, that I, and i think that's going to get well yeah. received because hypha is being uh a lot stricter these days and i'm kind of loving that it's fun seeing Tell me what systems kind of mature. What, you know? what what's happening there? Like from a um, you're saying from a less focus on story, more focus on movement. 
Um, <clears throat> yeah, so as we get closer to launching this multi-tenant view where other organizations can easily set up their own, um, Hypo is able to start focusing because things have just been way too freaking chaotic. Hypo has been trying to take on, you know, 50 different projects all at once. And it's just been too much for anyone to have a grasp of like, you know, it's my full-time job to understand what's going on. I have no clue. It's impossible. Like, and literally all I do is eat and breathe and sleep this and I have, I have not caught up. Um, so Hypo is needing to kind of focus. So we're kind of trimming off some of the things that, you know, we weren't meant to be doing. Um, some examples of that is like the game of seats, like that's a whole project in itself to make games for you know citizens to play. Like we're building the tech, we just launched the tech for the game, fine, but we don't need to also be designing the games, campaigning for the games, rolling them out, you know, collaborating with partnerships to run games. You know, we don't that might be a, that might be a project and pilots, like there's so much stuff that we are trying to do that now other organizations with the seeds are getting set up to do. So our push is well, that's like, that's that, that like the game. Yeah. yeah, the game of seeds, as an example, could be a project that rather than seeds, uh, uh, like rather, rather than the seeds as a kind of, um, you know, organizational ecosystem owns and like develops that, like that capacity. I think a, a, a good way of doing it would be that the up game could design um gamified uh like experiences of um and, and we be the we be the kind of prototyping um side of that oh my gosh that's brilliant um we are just putting together the game of seeds too and i'm so glad you just brought this up because it's ah, cool let's have a separate call about the the game of seeds integration because um, a big part of that is going to be having to, you know, to design the game. For example, I think we we're talking about it. I think it'd be such a cool game to do like a regenerate your street. We were, we were talking about this before, but you can, you know, come into LA, have, you know, 500 people where they set up these planter boxes outside their house and grow food in them. And then overnight, just one night, they all converge on one street and bring all their planter boxes and like potted trees and everything and turn the street into a forest of food, you know, and just just beautify the street, completely block it out. And your protest now is like direct regeneration of cities. And that's, you can make a statement, it could be really fun. You know, that could be a cool game where you can get people to come together and play, you know, or mm. all the way from that to a totally different game where it's just like Jumanji meets, you know, regeneration where, you know, your phone buzzes and it's like, you have 36 hours to complete the secret quest. Are you into it? And it's just like, oh man, yes. You know, you click on it, send you some riddles, and then you're supposed to meet up with three people at this particular time, and then you three go together and maybe plant a tree or do something. So it's like bringing yeah, yeah. people together, direct regeneration, having a lot of fun, like, you know, that angle, um, all the way to another angle where we're doing like education and learning experiences. You know, so you might go through the process of figuring out how to, you know, decondition from environments where you have to get told what to do and how to do it, i.e., capitalism and how our, you know, education system works. To being self-organized and being able to tap into what needs to get done and figure out a process to get it done. Unfortunately, that's a skill that's missing. Like as we're building all these self-organized systems, we keep running into the problem being that people don't know how to self-organize. Like we weren't taught how to actually go about, you know, making your own decisions and executing on it. It's kind of sad, really, because it seems like a basic fundamental human thing. Um, so anyway, we we want games, you know, teaching people how to do that. So I mean, the landscape of what a game is isn't you know, infinite. But what it is, is it just pays people. It's like complete XYZ, you can get paid and here's a platform to get it out there. Um, mm. So anyway, we've just built those tools, we just launched them and now we're looking for a group of people who kind of really get it. Um, and, you know, are able to put together games that are really deeply meaningful. Because um, I think some of the people that are behind it right now, uh, they are more tech focused and more like strategy of like how to build the technology and put it together, but they didn't necessarily, I think, have the narrative to know how to like, yeah, yeah. you know, what games to create, what content to put into it, how to make it fun, like that side. So technically, well, that's, it's content wise, yeah, it's really and that's where I think you're strong. So anyway, I thought it was a perfect. Yeah, point. yeah, yeah. Be 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 like a, 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 a rather than a, a chief product officer, it's like chief play officer. <laughs> totally. Just like design designing ways for uh, for us to maximize the play within the ecosystem for games because yeah what i've been seeing is and this is this is where another example of the, the street strategic partnerships there's um have you come across versus and dan mapes 
you know that they've created this whole spatial web platform they're creating a digital twin of the world they um dan is one of the people that's coming for the um for the abuse burn mm -hmm. for the for the uh anyway the the he's 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 literally a kind of professor x character and one of the companies he's raised i think like 11 or 12 million for the the um, ecosystem and written a book called the spatial web and uh, what he's created would allow us to create a um like a digital twin of a physical location uh so for example we could create a whole digital twin of um ibiza uh a you know an eco village could create a digital twin where they could go and showcase the um the future vision that they're that they're looking to create ahead of time so people can go and experience it virtually and then go and take that experience virtually and go and create it in the physical so it's oh kind of merging God. merging bits and atoms <laughs> it's like something letting so good for me because while you're talking about the spatial web my the little thought in my head was this is stupid like i don't want to build more technology to get people focused on technology like i want technology to be the medium that we connect in real life more so like, well, I'm that's the point of that's a future the point. where we're like living in vr and the spatial web it's like no yeah, yeah, yeah. But if we use that technology to demonstrate what an eco village looks like because that i've said that so many times we don't get it unless we're there you gotta kind of see it exactly you know i say exactly housing and people are like oh you're talking about like a cob house and it's like no these are the most beautiful buildings i've ever seen that are you know naturally built you know so if you could demonstrate that in a 3d environment people could walk around it freaking heck yes and then what's cool is this is how we get to 2021 with the year of the initial village offering and yeah you demonstrate exactly. what these villages look like people get to step into them live in them and then the village platform that I sent you a video of is how everyone fundraises, organizes, coordinates, and governs those villages. So we have like the whole package <laughs> to come in and launch them, you know, and being able so with, to with with that with that with with can is it like Aragon or uh, um, you know or Colony where each village could could issue their own token for the village? Well, uh, the same thing with Hypha. Watch the video. That, that's what I. That, that's that's what I mean. With Hypha enables, uh, Hypha would enable that. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll give you a real quick brief. No, nah, never mind. Just watch the video. It's better. I'll, I'll watch the video on the way back. So, but that, but basically, one question I had because we, we we had spoken about it before. Would would the up game be able to? uh um create a um uh, uh, uh like a token within yes. the ecosystem 100%. that yes. could be like be up game would have its own up token um you could do stars like we we're just talking about you could launch yeah. you can launch all your own badges yeah you create your own tokens you do your own budgeting like you are what ico was able to do right 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 okay okay and that and that would be ready to launch uh like that's as what we're launching going an to right it was meant to be and in July, but in a way we reprioritized. Anyway, it's definitely launching in August. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And that that's uh, okay. So that that would give us the ability to, um, you know, create the prototype for sixty people that are coming together to, so once they've been through this initiatory experience, which by the way I hope you can make it. I think that would be epic because I've always wanted to start a do with a deep ceremony like that, where you come together mm -hmm. and at the end of the event, having a commitment ceremony for those who want to join. The group. If you don't want to, then fine. Don't. But if you're joining and exactly. you commit to it, and then that like, you know, spiritual yes is so much more than what a lot of the DAO space is trying to do, or it's just financial incentives. Like I, I want to create with a group of people who are just a full body fuck yes for building together. And then the do is just a tool to use to signal and coordinate. You know, <clears throat> anyway, point is, I think that'd be really epic to do and we can have the do ready by then. Um, so, you know, starting in like August and September, we could be coming up with the initial roles and what to fill it with. Or that might even be part of like something you do right after the ceremony. You go into the ceremony, you dream up what your future organization or village or whatever it is you're building is going to look like, what goals it's going to need, like how we want to compensate people, like how we want to govern. And you just kind of like tap into that. And then you reflect all of that into the actual do 
you know, the weeks following the event. Um, and that's when you decide, you know, how we want to compensate, what's our salary structure, are we a universal basic income, everyone gets paid the same, or we have like three tiers, like, you know, but a lot of yeah. that can require like a heart-based understanding, or it's going to take years to figure out because <laughs> it's hard to yeah. But that heart-based yeah, yeah, understanding yeah. comes first, then all of those things are going to unfold a lot cleaner. Exactly, exactly. Um, well, this, this is where the, you know, with with the up game, I focused on creating a um, a kind of mythos for uh, you know the coming together of a kind of brotherhood sisterhood initiatory experience uh, that 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 like brings people's inner childs to the front and center, which I, I I'm a big believer is like the key to regenerative placemaking and regenerative culture is like let the inner child lead, like let's let's like we enchant ourselves as like um uh looking through the through, through the eyes of a child like childlike wonder of possibility and, and and radical hope yet that's what like we've developed as a narrative in the up game and then when people now come through in august for the, this yeah. prototype that's where we can then on board um with that with that uh, energy already there you know with that with that kind of um that initiatory experience because this is where I think Jamie Wheel is going to be joining and doing this uh, twice born initiation, which I've mentioned. Um, so, so you know, people will be like able to make this commitment, being like, "No, I'm I'm committed to this vision of an upgraded civilization. Mm. I'm committed to being, a, a, you know, a guy on that on on realizing that vision." And that's where that's where then that at that point people come into the do so we would launch the do probably potentially even before when people come so that they can get set up with profiles and maybe use it for communication like real you know uh um, they might have an initial so couple voting decisions like you know bring them in and then there's a couple decisions about the event that need to be collectively decided and let people vote on it yeah, yeah. exactly so when, when do you think um when when do you think we could launch the updo in August? Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. It was like what, I said, what, it was what, July, so it's, I don't know. What's the um? What's the like? Uh, what's the status there of it now? Like of of uh, of like how Haifa could be utilize for it. I mean, could we use the existing products for uh um... well we could use the existing tool set to make all the decisions already so then when it's ready you can just basically upload it so you can you can already start deciding you know what type of roles we want what type of badges we want you know start writing out what they actually look like so you know you got to give it a name you got to give it some characteristics right um so we've got to figure all this stuff out so we don't need to do launch to do all of this um, and then when it does launch, then it's just a matter of just plugging in the information. So as long as it's launched, you know, a day before the event, you know, or however many days you want to give people. So if you want to give them a week, as long as it's launched a week before the September event, then that should be fine, right? So if it actually is delivered, yeah. then it wouldn't be a problem. And then we can create a badge. So we have the, the stars. If you want it to be a badge, we can create it. We just need a little icon, you know, a little description of what it does. And a badge, uh, but a badge is different to tokens, right? Well, I mean, both of those things, all they are is just, <laughs> um, it's just spreadsheets or tables, really. Um, yeah. yeah, the difference between a token and a badge is you know, pretty superficial. Uh, and really, they're kind of the same thing. Right, I see. So it's the same. It's the same tech, but so we just could issue way. like if we had stars, we'd just be issuing someone like a hundred badges of the same type of badge, and and it would be like something like it would just be displayed differently. Yeah, typically, like how on the front end and how we interact with them, we would say a badge is something you get one of, um, and it typically comes with powers. But tokens could be the same thing where you can only have a maximum of one token, you know, that you're holding at a time. Whatever. Could you could could you have more? Could, Say again. Could you have like, let's say we want to give somebody like a thousand stars. Could could can can we do that with the? Yeah. 
So uh, anyway, you could do both. So the two things, I'll, I'll tell you what, <laughs> I shouldn't have been rude. Technically, they're very similar, but you know, so if you're going to do stars, we're going to send multiple of them and you want them to look like a currency, then create it as a token. And you can create yeah. as many different tokens as you want. Awesome. If you want it to like confer powers and be something that you, you know, you do something and you earn it and then you've done it and that gives you powers, make it like a badge. Um, mm -hmm. You have different types of badges. We say, you know, you're playing a mediator badge and that's a service the community needs. And this mediator badge gives you a 2% bonus in your salary and, you know, 3% extra voice, you know, because we appreciate this and we're going to give you more voice because maybe you're going to make better decisions because you're mediating conflicts. Cool. Now you're holding this badge, it's giving you those powers. Um, but the badge might only last for three months and then it has to get given back to you. So that's the badges we've built is those types of designs where we say, hey, you're a lamp lighter and that gives you some bonus you know, powers. Um, and, you know, a community of place that wants to give indigenous people's voice. I think we're all indigenous to the earth, but whatever. If they wanna give a certain group you know, more voice on certain decisions, they can issue them a badge, you know, like a nature protective badge which gives them like, you know, 100% bonus voice for voting on nature decisions or something. Um, so anyway, that's what mm -hmm. badges are, is they confer powers. Um, mm. White tokens are something that, you know, you can mint, you can send around. Um, typically you're trading them. So badges aren't something you would really trade or exchange a token right. that you trade. Um, yeah. And you had you've done all of this without ever incorporating the what you you didn't you you didn't incorporate the company behind Haifa, right? Yeah. So all of this was done with no legal entity, no bank account, never meeting in person. <laughs> Ninety percent of Haifa I've never met in person, which is a sad state of affairs. We'd like to fix that, but and we probably would have fixed it if there wasn't COVID. But all of our plans to meet up are getting. But anyway, we've demonstrated that, you know, and we, there's no reason we'd even have to know each other's names, really. I mean, for the most part, our team's kind of anonymous. But again, that's kind of a sad thing. I'd like there to be more heart connection, but I, um, it was kind of cool demonstrating that, that we were able to, you know, last for three years. There's 250 members now in Haifa, but maybe only, there's 50 members that are holding $100,000 worth of Haifa tokens at this point. So there's at least 50 people who contributed at least $100,000 in value to, you know, creating this. Um, mm, mm. Statistics that we saw. Um, That's amazing. So, so basically, I, we, we could create, because honestly, I've been, as I think you can probably appreciate, I've been super hesitant to incorporate United Planet as a company or a foundation oh. or a I mean, like what, you know, since when is the United Planet more than anything is a, is a story. It's a crystallized vision of our shared future. I mean, it's the and, and it's like, by UN, you know, it's the UN. Exactly. It's like the community. Exactly. Exactly. And it's so like, of course, you've to, got to not, to, to, you know, incorporate it. it needs to be. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 and, and that's where, that's where it's like, <clears throat> you know, having a, uh, having this be a, a a do from the beginning, where we don't we don't actually incorporate a legal entity until we really need to, I think would be uh, sorry, and maybe never do. You know, maybe have some other yeah. you know foundation that you contract with, but technically up has no legal representation. It would be nice mm. if they contracted with other entities to provide that. So there might be like you know, up labs or something that incorporates somewhere. And, you know, the updo, you know, hires them to do legal services for them. Yeah. It's just something that they're paid to do. It's just a service contract. Yeah. 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 I think, I, I mean, that's where, that's where Savannah Foundation as a, you know, a different, you know, we have a U.S. foundation that could, provide the bank accounts and uh, legal operations a bit. Yeah, so we could just partner with Savannah. So they could just be partners. And anything you need legal, you know, world stuff to do, have Savannah do it, and then they just charge up for the service. Yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. Yeah, and Savannah, Savannah becomes the like organizational seed for um, for United Planet, which is a completely decentralized organization. I like that. Yeah. 
and, and it helps Savannah structure. because it'll give you know as up succeeds Savannah succeeds because I'm sure that that flow of value between up and Savannah is going to grow because up's going to need Savannah services more. So that's cool. Yeah. To, you know, serve your other foundation too doing this, which is nice. Yeah. 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 That, that makes a lot of sense. That's actually immediately very clarifying on something I'm currently working on because uh, <laughs> there's, there's uh, a, a very pragmatic need in, in Spain to get uh residency to be to have like less than 25 percent of a company etc and i was like i don't want to be incorporating united planet as a company just because of my tax status it's like all the wrong reasons you know it's like it's it's like you know but i'm like uh, maybe we need a company but i think it's way better that um that the uh that the um that the up game would be a a a, a born decentralized and stay that way. Yeah, I think yeah. living completely in the new world is the way to do it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's so many <laughs> great. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. And I think that would be very um, compelling, even from a narrative, being like, we have no bank account, we have no organizational infrastructure, we are a, a movement of movements, uh, you know, a community of communities, um, gamifying the way we transform the world. You know, it's like that's that's the gap game. You know, that's what it, it, it it's. You know, we help pre-existing communities that are already on their mission to transform the world to come together through the games. You know, it's like right. it's just putting a game layer on top. And what's so great about it is then you get to crowdfund in the world, and they can invest in new civilizations. Like that's ultimately what we want to provide with like the whole oh, this whole ecosystem we're connecting together right now is it's all gonna be co-invested into each other. And there's gonna be one instrument, which is gonna be this index fund that represents ownership of all of them. This is part of what Hype is building right now itself, um, is to own a share of the entire ecosystem. Because then folks that, you know, they want to see institutional change, like kind of voting for Bitcoin to do that, but Bitcoin doesn't provide a new economic system, a new civilization, new civilization tool, it's not quite there. You know, Ethereum's kind of doing that with building new financial systems, you know, fantastic, that's awesome. I think we can do it from a, a new economic and civilization system. So instead of just voting for, you know, forget about the banks, now we're saying, you know, forget about the entire story of capitalism and what's happened for the last 2100 years of exploitation, like way more than that. Um, we're talking about a complete different type of civilization that can invest into it. Because that's what's going to ultimately continue to fund hyper is this perpetual crowdfunding that's going on as people are bringing in value. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the perpetual crowdfunding, that's like um, anyone can fund, right? Institutions can fund, cities can fund, individuals can right fund. right now, massive freaking um, VCs are, you know, crypto only, and they'll only buy tokens, you know, and they are controlling billions of dollars of value right now. So it's never yeah. really been easier to redirect it. People are looking you know, complete narratives and stories. And if we can present a complete ecosystem, like the funding is, uh, it'll, it'll be massive. We just need to demonstrate that we can do good well, things. And this this is where I want to connect a few dots as a kind of, you know, like as a, as a strategic, strategic alliance is, is um, you know, I've, I've, I've written this piece from billion, billionaires to billions of heirs, which is all about the wealth transfer um, of like giving pledge billionaires, for example, to say rather than like pledging your billions, why don't you put uh, like a, a, actually put a outcome based financing incentive for the change you wish to see in the world and you put that capital behind that change. And then we go and say like, OK, we're, we're creating a game to reverse engineer the future. And that that futures that we sell, like I wanted to re, re like kind of rebrand the notion of futures and saying like the up game, you can invest in futures, which means you're actually putting capital behind the vision that is being proposed so that there's pots of funding for people to go and realize what's actually already been envisioned in the game. And that's where city bonds can come in yep. you know, because cities could go and say, okay, we're going to put, you know, half a, half a billion dollars behind, uh, redesign of our you know of our like you know ho like how we how we 
uh, eradicate homelessness. Mm. And this is our, our city annual budget. If, if people can come up with an alternative way of addressing homelessness that is holistic, this is how much capital can be unlocked. And as soon as you flip the funding model and you it create an incentive ahead of it being done, it completely changes how organizations can get funded because then organizations can raise money to go and like, uh, essentially they can, they can, ex exactly, to go and, di di exactly. It, 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 it's like flipping the X prize on its head and, and you saying have instead that of it anywhere. That's an epic use case for the do. Um, yeah, I mean, that's where you know, we can bootstrap with cities as providing like, you know, people can vote on different things to fund, but doing it the other way around to say, this is how much money we have for this problem, like give us your proposals. And then anyone exactly. can like, put up their proposals and the citizens themselves are actually voting on it. You know, at the end of the day, the mayor exactly. have a multi sig, you know, a one of one where he gets to have the final vote if anything passes, but at least they can let the citizens kind of signal it. And then he can let the citizens kind of govern it or not. But maybe yeah. That he still has yeah. control. Well, this, this is this is very relevant for Tatiana, my my beloved, uh, runs Leaders on Purpose, and she's doing that. She's got the, the this like largest network of multinational CEOs, essentially trying to pivot these organizations from being profit first to purpose first. Um, and it's like it's a major high leverage position because it's like you know a lot of the CEOs of these companies recognize that they can't continue. Uh, the story that's been propagated, you know, with with like extractive capitalism, and and are trying to shift the culture of the organizations, but it's obviously a you know, um, it's it, 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 it's it's a it's not something that can just be like flicked on. It's yeah. like a whole strategic, um, and so she um, uh, she she for example could. Um, she could create uh, like a potential uh, stakeholder audience that could be potential funders for outcome-based financing. Okay, that could be offered to that community, for example. You see what I mean? So a company that wanted to see a particular goal that they yeah. set yeah, yeah. could actually put, totally. put the capital behind it and cool. then actually they become the funders of you know, a whole ecosystem, a whole decentralized ecosystem to support them reaching that goal. Totally. I actually Which I think is like the future that of regular organization perspective too, because I think this could actually benefit Hypo, where, you know, members come together to put up the strategic plan and then put, you know, bounties for, I mean, this is what we're doing with Quest. Yeah. So never mind. I guess we kind of already have that. Um, because the question is, you know, accomplish this, get paid this much for doing it. Um, but yeah, this is more like an open request request system yeah you get to put up a, like hey this is a budget Bring there's a, a along yeah oh. along the strategic alliances conversation there's there's currently um tatiana is partnered with empire which is like one of the big events production organizations and they're putting together an ecosystem to create essentially like a platform of platforms around purpose where they're going to be bringing in skull foundation like UN Global Compact, uh, various other organizations to go and say, okay, a lot of the events that are happening are duplicative. How can we create a, a, a kind of a decentralized meta ecosystem of everybody that's convening around the future and around purpose, around impact, so that we can like actually have a more intelligent approach. Um, and that, that, that could be that like decentralized ecosystem could in, could itself be organized as a do. Oh, a hundred percent. Like uh, you're, you're telling yeah. me this and I'm like, great. Like we've built the technology for them between C yeah. So like, that's what they're looking for. You know, like that would change the whole game. They want to change the system. Like every event is just an onboarding ceremony. Like, yes, we're singing and dancing and having an epic time too. But it's like a literal onboarding ceremony. You're like, here's the new economic system. Here's how we do it. You know, welcome on board. You know, welcome to the new paradigm. We're we're in it, and just like bringing the wealth in, like there's, it'll just transition the system, and then we get to go around doing that. Like, it's huge, and it needs to freaking happen mm. because we need to change our systems. You know, right now. Um, so yeah, I'd love talking with them. Actually, setting the call, giving them a, a rundown of what the ecosystem is between hype and seats, and how these come together to provide that new system we're looking for. 
um, and how they can mm-hmm. enhance their, the movement building component, which is what they are really good at. They're good at narrative, they're good at story, they're good at building communities and networks. Like that's what they've done and really excel at. But they don't have the decentralized economic system to give to them. So <laughs> that's just yeah, 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 yeah. This is this is okay. So right, we have a we have a game plan for Tuesday to put these proposals. Put these proposals. I'll, I'll have the proposals in advance. Yeah. And um, and then let's like come together and choose through with that partnership with Empire and everything. Like this is what David's role, I think, was. Um, but anyway, essentially that like going in and actually doing the movement building, but then seeing these relationships through would be, you know, incredibly yeah. valuable for Haifa. And anyway, how um, how are things with David? What's what's happening there? I mean, I'm dropping the ball there because there's way too many messages and I'm not getting back to people. So I think I'm not responding to him. <laughs> That's not okay. out of anything other than a lack of time. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think he shifted from, you know, originally how I thought he was going to show up and how he thought he was going to show up. You know, the beginning was, you know, we're going to set up local food systems. And then the middle was, you know, I'm going to be in the partnerships with Empire and Skull and all that. Um, and you know, kind of bringing you interesting. That's that's actually my that's that's my beloved's relationships, but um, but uh, that's where I was at in the middle, and now yeah. it's more like he's doing the crystal startup thing. It's like kind of shifted. Um, and I don't think yeah. right, right now, and that was my last conversation with him, is I don't think that's the you know, the original value that we came to create together for. It's awesome if that's what you want to do. Maybe Haifa incubates it. Um, so he was getting investment, but then Haifa to like incubate into them. Um, but that's into the Chris, Crystal Mountain thing? Yeah, the, that thing that he's doing for it to just run an incubation request and set up its own do, and Haifa can invest, you know, startup capital into it. Um, Got it. That's okay. what Haifa is also doing, is being an incubator and then owning Haifa. So if you get quests in Haifa and you run the Haifa token, holding this Haifa token is going to make you eligible for all of the dues that we incubate. So when we help up set one up, we're going to charge you some initial of your tokens which then get airdropped on all the Haifa token holders. So that holding Haifa is actually how you get part ownership of every do that gets launched in Haifa. But then it's um, also how dues get to build their initial community and welcome people aboard. And they get to come in, you know, airdrop a little bit of value to everyone and create the incentive for them to support their new organization. So it's a way for you to like come in and, um, basically, you know, immediately receive a community who has a vested interest in you succeeding. So as our yeah. community grows, that compounds back onto it. You know, if we have a million people, you know, they're buying stuff, they're doing things. So if a new organization comes in that's selling a certain product, people are going to have a preference to buy that product because if that company exceeds, they already own a share of it, so everyone's benefiting. <laughs> so it creates this really virtuous cycle and feedback loop that helps, you know, expand, and, um, align the incentives to grow it, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Ruben, have you seen the DevX DAO? I'm going to put it in here because they're, they're issuing grants. I think they gave, uh, um, they gave Polis, uh, Ruben's organization, something like a, a million, uh, a, a million dollars, uh, grant for the community. Oh, nice. I don't know if you, I don't know if this is aligned, but I, it was one on my list to research today. Um, have you seen that before? Yeah, like I, I have seen this, and I was going to do it, but someone told me it's like a two-hour or four-hour freaking application process. Um, that's a freaking another quest. If you wanted to go through that process for Haifa and up and all this and funding the do tools and approaching it from that perspective, but we probably have to do that together actually because. Probably this could be this could be like a strategic alliance kind of thing that we could put because uh you know i've i've got a way to connect to the founder of this um uh in, in, in a way that i think could get he could get behind the the, the, the this concepts because he's in he's wanting to gamify more of the kind of community ecosystem this could provide some budget to actually like integrate with Haifa you were, potentially, I don't know if it is. No, a hundred percent. Like what I'm literally putting together now is a pitch deck for Haifa because we are just deciding, like DAOs are super hot right now. We have one of the best production views available. 
or DAOs available. Uh, so I think once we launch in August, like we have, or, anyway, <clears throat> Um, with all that being said, that's what Haifa is refocusing on is we just got a partnership with the Ministry of Agriculture in Peru to set up all of their cacao and coffee growers on dues because they want to do value sharing tokens, they want supply chain tracking, and basically the dupe technology. They're all cooperatives, so they want to vote and pass governance and all that stuff. Um, so we're focusing on launching the dues for you know local food systems. And then I sent you the video for us doing the do for villages. You know, setting up dues for regions, you know, through seeds and all of this. So we've got this immense platform growing right at the cutting head of everything that's hot right now. Um, and we haven't taken any VC money so far. And we're valued at you know, 22 million as well. I say this is because it's a really great deal for VCs. And we haven't approached them yet. So we're just putting the deck together to go out there. Um, and there's a lot of capital looking for projects to go into. So I think we get to be pretty selective in this market. Uh, so I think it's about finding the most aligned partnerships to be able to bring in to fund us at this stage. Um, I've heard some yeah, yeah, yeah. next DAO. I love that it's a DAO that's investing into us. Awesome. Um, so yeah, I think opening that relationship and giving them one of the first you know presentations to this thing. Um, that would actually probably yeah. be a trick from you is you can present it as if you're doing them a favor because you are. Um, because finding projects like Hypo right now that haven't taken any VC money um, being able to be one of the first ones to get on the ground floor after the technology has already been built and proven like that doesn't happen in this space every vc yeah, yeah, exactly. into it at the seed stage before you know they've built the technology and proven it out. Like we it's, 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 the it's, 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 it's ironic it's, it's like ironic it's like you no know, seeds handled the seed stage yeah. we're, we're now at the growth stage exactly. <laughs> we're now That's at the yeah. we're now, we're now the at seed the seed harvest stage. Exactly. Seeds. <laughs> it's like that should be the me. Like investor. That's so true. That's hilarious. I love it. Um, uh, seeds. Seed. Exactly. It's yeah, like, you're 100 percent right. Yeah, that's funny. It's exactly right. It's like it's like no. We we're, we're now looking for farmers to harvest what we've already seeded. <laughs> it's like yeah. Uh, um, yeah, man, yeah. there's like 15 places that we can play then. Um, all of these are really exciting. So I've got one question for you. Are you ready to like have your entire life consumed with building the Renaissance? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it already is. I just need to connect the dots formally. You know, it's, right. uh, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I made a commitment uh, uh, three years ago to like literally I, uh, dev dope, devote my life to the the, the visions I see and know to be true in the future, and uh, and, and and you know I'm I'm just uh, um, you know as as long as I'm having fun doing it while I'm doing it, I'm like committed to uh, you know continue to be an agent on behalf of that future I already know to be true. You know, it's like it it, it helps a lot when you believe uh, we've already been successful. <laughs> To me, it's like it's actually the way the way I can um, kind of uh, cope with the existential grief of mm. the look of the craziness of of what I presently see. I was like, you know, I, I I come from the future and I know it's good there. <laughs> it's like it's, it's uh, you know, I know I know I know this craziness that we've currently been conquered by is not what uh, it, it is is so inferior. You know, it's not, it's mm -hmm. not, not about better or worse. It's just, it's just immature. It's just like, mm -hmm. you know, is, is the, is the caterpillar inferior to the butterfly? Well, it's not like that spectrum. It's like, it's. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I look at it as, you know, human development goes through three very distinct phases, you know, independent or sorry, dependent, independent, interdependence. You know, you're completely yeah. dependent on the mother when you're in the womb and for the early years. Then you go through, you know, your terrible twos and your teenage years where you're learning your independence. And then humans who mature, it's neither good nor bad. It's just progression, whether or not we go on it. It's, you know, there's some value statements there. But the next stage is interdependence. And I think like capitalism and market-based economics and our current systems are so focused on independence. Like, and it's this isolationism too. Like we're independent, we are separate from Earth. You know, like, you know, I am my mother. Like, you know, babies are physically their mother growing up until they're not. In the independent stage and that's where we're at we're like we are no longer earth you kind of like shun that and say we are separate from nature you know but i think the next stage is interdependence where we move from mother earth to lover earth where we come back into relationship with her 
mm. help us see ourselves as an interconnected whole, you know, a reciprocal being. Uh, mm. So that's kind of where I see the evolution going through. And that's the, you know, I'm being mostly guided. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, that's what I think these tools that we're creating are, is the tools for interconnection to happen again. Um, so it's kind of like the neural system in the mind, like they're all interconnected and they're actively firing. And, um, I, I see humanity going in that way, where we're going to become more like a neural network of, you know, hundreds exactly. of millions of people coming together to be able to cohere on a line vision. Like, in yeah. Way. Well, that, that's what, honestly, for 12 years, that neural net um, is, is what I've felt as my dharma, what I've known to be as my dharma. You know, I, I've been... I've probably given talks to now tens of thousands of people about creating that like neural nets, you know, the, 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 the you know, we, we, we would call it the, the, um, the, 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 the talent hive, um, you know, of collective yeah. intelligence, you know, um, but it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, think, I mean, it's, I should send you some of my, uh, uh just, just, so, I, 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 I gave talks on DAOs as like how DAOs would change the way the whole talent landscape six years ago um, as they were just coming out. Five years ago, I was speaking about DAOs in my, because I, um, I used to do tons of public speaking all over the world. And uh, I should send you some of those videos because it's like, it's like, yeah, I, well, one, one video in one video in particular, I think you'll you'll like really appreciate. I'll send it to you. It's, All uh, right, well, here, uh, let's make a deal. Yeah, I have to run right now. But you send me that video. Yeah. Um, I sent you the village one, and let's go about making twenty twenty three the year of the initial village offering. Yeah, <laughs> perfect, perfect. That sounds great. I'm gonna send. This is the one uh, I'm gonna send to you here. I'm gonna put it in the chat. Um, and I absolutely yeah, love, I want to collaborate with you on the village project because you brought all those incredible aligned pieces, like, you know, designing this for mayors to be able to run out in their city. Like that's so freaking great. Like I, I yeah. love the perspective and that shift. Um, I'm actually going to share this video with the new team so they could watch that because I'd love them to, you know, hear about this. Um, yeah. But yeah, cool. No, please do, please do. Yeah, totally. I sent that on, that on WhatsApp. Um, this is just a video where I talk about some of the, this is like 2016. So it's like, you know, early, early to talk about some of these things, but, um, Excellent. it's, uh, th this, you'll, you'll see, this is like brave new days. So freaking love um, it, but you'll, yeah. All right. Much love to you. Um, you too. See you Tuesday. And, and set me up, set up for Tuesday. So I'll talk to you then. Perfect. Perfect. Good and time. I'll get those proposals together. All right. Take care, man. Bye-bye.